Uh, awesome, so this is working. Um, hi, and welcome to our, our talk today on curvature in Zanabe. Um, it's, it's actually great to see as many people as we can actually in here. Um, hopefully you've had uh, as good of a summit as we have so far. We've had so much interest actually in this so far. It's been really good. So, uh, uh, well, that's not working at all. Um, so today um, we're going to sort of talk about uh, sort of how we got here, um, who are we, and, and then we're going to move on to sort of describe curvature in a little bit more detail, talk, talk to you a little bit about Denabi, and then we're going to open up some questions at the end because we know a few people have been asking uh, quite a lot of questions about how we've, how we've built these tools. Um, so a little, about, a little bit about us. Um, we are a group of four undergraduates from a university in the UK working as software engineers uh, at Cisco Systems. Um, we're over here actually as part of our degree. Um, so we've been sort of chucked in uh, and sort of left to do our own thing. And sort of it's, it's been a lot of fun, actually. And we've really enjoyed the opportunity to be able to work for Cisco Systems. Um, so when we first arrived, actually, at, uh, at Cisco, we, uh, oh, is it working out? Yeah. Awesome. Um, so when we first arrived at Cisco, we were sort of chucked in at the deep end, really, with, with OpenStack and sort of told to play around with it. We started playing with Quantum, and uh, we were doing some research, actually, into um, sort of the networking side of things. And actually, we started playing around with, with VMs and servers, just throwing small little Python clients on them and siphoning data out and trying to visualize it. And uh, uh, we lost the cropping, actually, on this picture. But um, what you can see here is one of our initial concepts where we were siphoning data on CPU and RAM and also all of the network connections and just pumping them into a, a visual tool uh, in a web browser, which allowed you to see all the connections based on the color and based on the size. Uh, you, you could see a lot of information all in one place. And what we learned from this is that very simple and uh, visualizations rather can actually be very powerful so you can get a lot of information in one place just by sort of changing the way something looks and uh, we, we sort of looked at this and the being, even after we were sort of being able to visualize something well we we thought what if we could flip this on its head maybe and uh, actually put input back through a visualization so we started looking at the problems that exist in the cloud today. So how do people visually interact with the cloud at the moment? Well, you've got two dashboards. You've got the AWS dashboard and you've got the OpenStack dashboard. And both of them sort of display all the data in a tabular form, which for AWS, because of it's got this, this static topology view for all of its users, means that that sort of makes sense. You've only got a fixed number, amount of data to display for certain options, and you've only got a fixed number of, of topologies that you can choose from. But having played with quantum, we realized that you've got this flexibility that exists inside OpenStack, which can't be utilized by these sort of tabular views. So having a user be able to create advanced topologies and very complex topologies just couldn't be done through Horizon, especially when we started developing this in stable Folsom. So we started designing two tools with one concept, and that was to try and make OpenStack easier and a bit more friendly to, to the user. So we built two tools, Curvature, our new visual, new age, shiny front end, and Denabi, a, a, visual, a, a tool that allows you to, to wrap these containers into blueprints. And you'll hear a bit more about that later. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pass you over to Brad, who's going to sort of go over a lot more about curvature. And you'll see a lot more on this interactivity, the logical side of things where you can build up these topologies. And also, you'll see with the extension of Denabi, we've actually made it a lot more adaptable. So as these new versions of OpenStack come along, you'll be able to build new tools in, like things like Load Balancer as a Service, and also hopefully Firewall, and maybe a few more. OK, great. Uh, so, yeah, we're trying to make OpenStack easier to use from a front-end point of view in terms of actually deploying. So, that's quite loud. Uh, there we go. So, what we tried to keep in mind when we were building this tool is how you actually work now. 
So for me, whenever I'm thinking about deploying, whether it's virtual machines or actually on bare metal, I kind of draw it out with a little diagram. And this is very crude, but um, we wanted to keep this in mind when we were orchestrating like through curvature. So let's jump straight into a demo. I'm just going to show you exactly what curvature looks like, and then we're going to try and do uh, a live deployment. And here we go. This is what uh, curvature looks like when we first log in. So you can see we're actually visualizing the network topology in a graph, which is much easier to understand. And we'll go through all those different node types in a second. Um, but the way you interact with curvature is we have this tools tab up here. So we can see we've got a link tool, and that's how we define the networking. We connect different nodes together. Uh, delete tool, so we can mark nodes for removing from your OpenStack deployment. Uh, then we have this Images tab, which is a list of all of your images from Glance on your OpenStack deployment. And you can just drag those nodes on so that they're ready for deployment. Uh, the Networks tab, uh, so this is where all of your Layer 2 and Layer 3 uh, quantum components are. And as Sam mentioned, it's going to be really simple. We interact with OpenStack just via the REST API. So as things like the Firewall as a Service, Load Balancer as a Service come in, we can just add nodes on there that, so you can drag those components on and put them into your deployment. Uh, we have containers, which is part of the NARBA, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later, and volumes, which is a list of all of your volumes from Cinder. So in terms of what you can see with the nodes, uh, this big world icon represents your public or your external network. Uh, then we have some routers. Uh, networks represented by a cloud. And you can see these colors around the networks. And we use that to help visualize what virtual machines are running actually inside a network. And this is particularly useful. So we can see this virtual machine here has uh, two NICs, one in each network. So it's just another way of representing that. And you can see as we click, we've also got uh, a whole load of data uh, displaying the IP addresses and lots more information about the different types of nodes. So let's try and uh, actually do a deployment through this. So if we log out, you'll see this screen, which you're probably very familiar with if you've used Horizon. Um, so we're just going to log in with our Keystone credentials. Um, and that's really key, actually. So the configuration for this tool is you only need to know about your Keystone endpoint IP. And then from that, we can get the service catalog, calculate all of the other endpoints. And that's the only configuration you need to actually get this up and running. So we're presented with this blank uh, project here with just an external network. So we're going to use that crude example of just two virtual machines inside a network connected to a router, connected to the external network. And we're going to try and deploy that now. So really simple. We just grab all of those components and we drag them onto the graph. So if we start with the network, we're going to drag the network node on. And we're going to be presented with a dialog where we can add a name uh, for that network. And we just set a random CIDR for the first subnet in that network. And that's popped onto the graph. So now we're going to drag on a couple of um, images because we want to create some virtual machines. So we're just going to use the Cirrus image. And then we're going to select our link tool. Um, and we're going to tap on both of those virtual machines and then the network. And you'll see that those virtual machines pop in. And it moves around, and it's nice, and it's shiny, and everyone likes a bit of that. <laughs> um, so now we're going to just, the final component we need is a router. So we just drag a router on. And again, we use the link tool just to, uh, to connect those components together. And I think it's just worth pointing out that how easy this tool is to use. So our dev stack that we're running on broke five minutes before the presentation, and we lost all of our test like things that we could show you. Um, but we really managed to quickly, rapidly build this out using this tool. So that was good. So everything's blue at the moment. And uh, that represents the undeployed state in terms of OpenStack. So this is our design stage. So if we wanted to make changes or use the delete tool to remove or change any of those nodes, we can. Um, but we're going to just go ahead and hit deploy. And what that's going to do is it's going to make all of those REST calls to OpenStack. And so the virtual, uh, the virtual machines are orange because they're in a build state. And we're constantly getting information back from OpenStack so that we've always uh, got the latest information. And the network and the router should be active. And there we go. Those uh, virtual machines are now uh, active as well. This is running Grizzly, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, like I say, as things like the, the firewall as a service and load balance, so we can add those components in. So now that's all up and running. Um, we can do anything that we would normally do. So we might want to associate some floating IPs. And the way we deal with that is we double click the external network. And we can add some floating IPs from, the, uh, from that allocation pool. 
And so there's a new floating IP that's ready to be used. And we can just connect, click on any virtual machine that's up and running. And we'll be given a list of those floating IPs that we can access. And then we can hit associate. And there we go straight away. That's hit OpenStack and um, associated that floating IP. So we have a lot of other um, features as well, like to do with security and security groups and key pairs. And we're aiming for full kind of feature parity with a, a bit more added as well to Horizon, which is coming soon. So yeah, now we're going to just, if we can switch back to the slides, we'll just uh, say a, a quick mention about what we've learned from doing this. Um, so the first thing, like I said, it, it's shiny, and it's really easy to use. And everyone loves that. So that's been really uh, useful. Um, and it kind of takes away some of the mystery of, of using quantum. So we don't actually need to worry about what the interfaces are doing and what the gateways are we need to attach. Because for a first time user, that may be slightly too complex. But we can still take advantage of all these really cool um, software defined networking components in quantum. So that's really good. Um, now, one thing that we kind of found was we can build these really complex network topologies in a nice visual way. And it would be great if we could save them and use them again. So that's why we've built Denabe. And we're going to talk about that a bit more now. Yeah, sure. So we actually make all of those REST calls ourselves. Yeah, sure. So we, so we bring up uh, networks, routers, VMs. It doesn't matter what, what, how you drag them on or anything like that. We do the, the deployment across the whole graph. Yeah, um, that, uh, at the moment it is, yeah. So we'll just talk okay. about, a bit about Donabe. Thanks, Brad. Um, so as Brad said, um, once we had this tool and we were giving it to users and, and seeing how they were playing with it, we were finding that people were uh, getting on with it great. They were building these complex virtual network topologies. But then you found that perhaps you want to save some of these topologies to use uh, later. Um, so we started, uh, this is a screenshot of a, of a very, very early version of Curvature. And we had this idea that you could save these topologies. You'd just click a button, and it would just read this entire graph that you'd built and save it on a back end, and, and you could get to it later. But what we were finding people were using these things for was instead of uh, saving an entire network design, they might uh, design individual little components that you might want to reuse as part of larger applications. Uh, so it was at that point that our manager at Cisco, Debo Dutta, um, started talking to us about a proposal he put forward at the Essex Summit a few years ago uh, called Tanabi. Um, and the idea behind Tanabi is that it would uh, define these virtual application, virtual network topologies uh, as containers that uh, would contain uh, either routers, networks, virtual machines, any kind of standard OpenStack node, but also containers themselves. So this idea that you could build out uh, something complex like a web server stack with load balance databases or application servers connected to web servers, but you could build these components as individual containers and connect those together instead of building out all these individual nodes and, uh, and connecting those one by one. And the way that we connect these containers together is using a system that we call endpoints. So when you design, say, a maybe a load balance database service container, you might have uh, several virtual machines running a database uh, all under the same uh, CIDR of a single network. And then you might have your load balancer virtual machine as part of that as well. And you want your load balancer virtual machine to be the point that anyone outside the container hits first before it talks to anything else. And so that would be your endpoint. Um, it's not dependent on curvature in any way. It's a completely separate service that runs on its own little web server. Um, all interaction with it is done via REST API. So we've built it to work great with curvature via REST, but you can also just hit it natively using its REST uh, REST um, template system. Uh, so yeah, so the best way to, uh, to show you how all this works is to demonstrate to you how we've integrated this with Curvature. So I'll just pass over to Jack, and he'll walk you through some of that. Cheers, John. So yeah, um, as you remember from Brad's demo, we've got um, the containers tab up here. And um, that's blank at the minute. But what it would include is um, a list of blueprints uh, from Denabe that we can deploy. So let's go ahead and create one. 
So if we start with a very um, simple container, you can see we've got all the same tools available on the main graph. So if we can go to the Images tab and drag a couple of images on. And we can go to the network, uh, we can drag a network on and save that. And if we go back to the tools, we can uh, network this in the same way that we would on the main graph. And we do have an extra tool here. So as John mentioned, we can mark things as an endpoint, and that will expose that component on the outside of the container. So let's go ahead and mark that network as an endpoint and get this container saved. So let's call that bottom layer. So as you can see, the, uh, the bottom layer container is shown up in our list of containers that are ready for deployment. But uh, let's not do that just yet. Let's explore a more complex container structure. So I think, as John mentioned, you can have containers in containers. So if we go over to the containers toolbar, we can have, say, two instances of the bottom layer container. And you can see the endpoint there exposed on the outside. And if we drag a router on, we can get those networks. And if we wanted to connect this to the XNet, we'd want to set that network as an endpoint. Router. <laughs> so yeah, let's get that saved as top layer. So there we go. So um, all that's left to do is try and deploy this. So if we drag that on, again, just as before in the container builder, you can see that the uh, router is exposed on the outside. We can connect that to the XNet and hit deploy. So just as any other component, the blue indicates that it's undeployed. And what we've done now is um, by REST API, we've asked Denabe for one instance of this container to be deployed. And Denabe is handling all, of, all, of, all the deployment logic there. So if you run Denabe without curvature, you still get that feature. Yeah, it's gone black to indicate that it's up. So if we double click it, we can take a look inside. It's exactly as we designed it. We can drill further down. We could. Um, click on the nodes to uh, get networking information and uh, see the uh, CRDRs that the networks ended up getting. And yeah, so that's, um, that's how we've integrated Denabe with Curvature. So if we could bring the demo back. So how do Denabe and Curvature fit in with your typical OpenStack deployment. So this is uh, the topology of a typical OpenStack deployment as it looks today. And if we go next, this is how it looks with um, denial bay and curvature. So again, it's important to highlight here that there is absolutely no binding between these two components. You can run denial bay without curvature. You can run curvature without denial bay, and it'll automatically detect that and strip the relevant UI elements out. And we are by no means done with these components either. With um, Curvature, we want to add the ability to save an entire topology. So um, that would be useful for uh, migrations and other such applications. Um, for Denabe, we want to formalize a way to modify live containers so that you can change one container and have that propagate out across the network. And we want to add the metadata service to both so that we can um, start to con have some more intelligent containers and say, you know, configure your web servers and databases uh, on deployment. So yeah, in summary, we have um, Curvature, which is a network visualization and uh, provisioning tool. We have Denabe, which is our application container service. And we're going to be going open source with both. <laughs> so um, I wish we had a, a little bit more detail on that. But all we can say at the moment is that that process is uh, underway. and. Uh, could be weeks, maybe a couple of months, but we are definitely open sourcing at this point. So yeah, at this point, we'd like to open up to any questions. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, I have a pun. Uh, yeah. You've rewritten the visualization. How can you integrate this? How does it upstream? Where do you see yourself in the long term? That is a conversation uh, that actually we'd be very keen to have with uh, Mr. Hurley sitting over there. Yeah. Um, uh, up until now, this has kind of been—it's been a very internal project to Cisco. So this is the first time we've kind of had a chance to show it to the wider community, and the feedback we've had to it is absolutely fantastic. Um, we're seeing there's obviously a need out there for this much more kind of tactical way to interact, and if there's a way we can get it out there and get it integrated with Horizon, then that's definitely a, a conversation we'd like to have. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I hope. I sure hope. Yeah, so do yeah. I. <laughs> Uh, both both of these components are actually run on top of Ruby on Rails, um, which uh, you can probably shun us as heathens for that. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it does break with the Python. Yes, yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, when we started with this project, actually, we came in to Cisco Systems in July last year, not knowing anything about do, uh, doing web apps. So um, for us, we sort of jumped in, and our manager actually pushed us in the general direction as Rails, as it was sort of a, a starting point for us. So the, most of the logic for curvature is in the JavaScript, HTML5, and the SVG rendering that we do. Right. Um, so most of that's up there. We just use Rails as a pass through to OpenStack in that instance. Uh, so that, curvature's completely stateless? Yeah. So it's all happening with the API? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So all your logic is Yeah. So theoretically, the, all the curvature stuff would be, I mean, all the, it, all the power of that really is in the JavaScript. So. Yeah. Uh, you did a random PDF to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it wasn't in a private subnet. It was just for, for demoing. Just yeah. hit yeah. random. That way we didn't uh, hit into overlapping IPs and things like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that wouldn't really be it. Was, it was just a nice convenience feature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would be convenient? I mean, I can see it being convenient for the system itself. Right. I don't know if there was a reason. Just 98 dots. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, okay. it was yeah. more uh, for when we, when we start, first started working with it, we uh, didn't have floating IPs turned on in quantum. So we'd end up with constantly getting networks that ended up overlapping, and we couldn't be bothered to keep writing out the same IP address again and again yeah. and again. So, yes, oh, go ahead. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. So what we're hoping to do actually in, in future versions is to hopefully to hook in and get some actual WebSocket stuff going. So if anyone actually tries to use a, a different dashboard or the CLI, any changes will actually get pushed back up to the browser even without a refresh. So that's the sort of thing we're heading for. Uh, go ahead. Perfect <laughs> <laughs> uh, is awesome. I actually want to ask you about the project. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, if do you mind if I jump in? Go ahead. Yeah, um, Danabe, um We first started developing it actually, um, like John said, when we we had this temp the ability to save these templates, and we we saw that was really useful and decided to sort of break it out. And the main focus of it at the moment is purely on the ability to save the topology. So at the moment, there's no um, no ability to actually configure the VMs. Um, so it would be definitely something worth looking actually into is whether we could integrate with heat and actually get that up into yeah. the front end as well. So maybe get some ideas the, shared between us there. Yeah, the the extensibility of curvature is is such that we should be able to sort of plug in components like heat, and we've been talking to uh, potentially uh, sort of plug in other components that we've seen around as well. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh sorry. Um, yeah, we can we can definitely get some of that more information. Out yeah, there. definitely. We we want to 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 start a conversation with the community about this. So we we really want to get more involved. So, yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah, absolutely. As future functionality, that's definitely the kind of thing that you could extend all of this to do. Um, we've tried to design it. We've designed it kind of with open source in mind from the very beginning. So we've tried to make it as easy to add in new functionality like that or strip out functionality you don't need or anything like that. Um, right now, obviously, it's all fully just concentrating on interacting on the API layer, getting all this information, building your topology. Um, but yeah, if that's the kind of thing that users would find useful, then absolutely. Uh, 
currently it doesn't, but that's something we are going to add. Um, we've actually we've we've got uh, the ability to catch any of the uh, errors that actually come back from OpenStack. So we've been using those to actually manage the deployment as it goes along. So that all if it uh, with Denarbi itself. If it encounters actually any errors when it's deploying a container, it will roll those back. So it will completely undeploy everything that it's deployed up to that point. So we, we thought that would be uh, it's sort of a almost a transactional action to deploy a container. Um, on Denarbi side, on Curvature side of things, rather, if it encounters an error halfway through deployment, everything on the graph will, will actually remain in the state that it was before deployment, um, apart from the things that have actually gone up successfully. Yeah, so if you wanted to, you could then um, go back and delete, mark some nodes for deletion, re-hit deploy, and it will do those deletes first, wait for those to come down, and then bring up whatever you had before. Any other questions? Yep. It absolutely does. Um, so that first, when we first loaded up the first screen you saw uh, on the uh, when we switched from the slides um, is all information that's been loaded in live from the APIs on a dev stack that's running on our machine here. So you can, uh, as I think Sam mentioned or Brad mentioned, the only configuration option we have when you uh, install Curvature is the IP address of your Keystone service. Um, so you boot it up, you log in through Keystone, you get the service catalog, we get the uh, endpoints of all the appropriate APIs, and we read in that information every time you refresh the page, and it learns your whole topology and it draws it. So you could point this at any OpenStack deployment running the appropriate uh, services and see a, a curvaturized graph of what you've got going on. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. you could. Uh, <laughs> you want us to boot up Horizon, like spin up a VM? I'll do it through Horizon, that's a bit easier. <laughs> Thanks, <Jake>. Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have to. Uh, you want to jump into the project? <laughs> no. But yeah, we, we, uh, when we actually first started playing with, with OpenStack, it was in Folsom. So the, uh, we started playing around with Quantum uh, as, as soon as it came in, and we actually started playing around with all the Layer 3 stuff immediately. Um, so we didn't have the support in Horizon um, for things like the routers, which is why um, we started actually developing the ability to, to do it through Curvature. It was, it was much easier that way. Um, rather than ending up having to make like 16 calls to the CLI to remove three routers that you'd spun up by accident. So yeah, we just deployed one, and now there's three in that network. So great, Phew, else? that worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting there. Definitely, <laughs> it's in the works, and we cannot wait for you guys to actually be able to play with it. And yes. <laughs> That's up to the community. There you yeah. go. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I think one of the reasons that um, we started kind of building our own uh, topology saving structure when we were doing this is, uh, well, simplicity was key, number one. We just needed to be doing the kind of stuff you've seen here. Um, so we didn't need some of the extra functionality that's in there in Heat. But also, uh, at the time, I don't think there was quantum support in Heat, if I'm right there. So yeah, so we needed to jump straight in with the quantum stuff. So that's, that was the main reason we, we went down that road. So um, something, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, something actually, we, we jumped into a, a few of the, the heat discussions, and something we've been looking at is actually the, the ability to, to move towards Tosca for our, uh, uh, the actual structure to be sent around. So, and that, that seems to be in the same direction as, as heat is going. So, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah. Like we say, we've kind of been isolated in our own little uh, <laughs> our own little pod in Cisco for the last few months, and this is our chance to kind of 
open up these conversations, and we're really keen to do that. Great. No other questions? All right. Thanks for uh, coming to see our work. If yeah. you, uh, Thank you very much.